and welcome to the Georgia State University Climate Literacy Labs. I'm Mila, and I'm here to help you with your weather and climate class. Today we are doing lab number one, solar radiation and seasons. You probably already know that the sun is the primary source of energy, I mean light and heat for the Earth. And the changing of the seasons is a result of the Earth's movement around the Sun. But now try to think a bit deeper and imagine that process in detail. How exactly the Earth is moving and how that movement causes seasons. Imagined? Okay, so now let's compare your model with the beliefs of some Harvard graduates. I'm going to show you a short clip from a documentary called A Private Universe. To test how a lifetime of education affects our understanding of science, we asked these recent graduates some simple questions in astronomy. Consider, for example, that the causes of the seasons is a topic taught in every standard curriculum. Okay, I think the seasons happen because as the Earth travels around the sun, it gets nearer to the sun, um, which produces warmer weather and gets farther away, which produces colder weather, and, then, and hence the seasons. How hot it is or how cold it is at any given time of the year has to do with the, the, the closeness of the Earth to the sun during the seasonal periods. The Earth goes around the sun, <laughs> and, and it gets hotter when we get closer to the sun, and it gets colder when we get further away from the sun. These graduates, like many of us, think of the Earth's orbit as a highly exaggerated ellipse. Even though the Earth's orbit is very nearly circular, with distance producing virtually no effect on the seasons, we carry with us the strong, incorrect belief that changing distance is responsible for the seasons. Do you have the same misconceptions as those students? If so, don't worry. By the end of this lab, you are going to know more about seasons than some of the Harvard graduates. First, Earth is much smaller than the Sun. It's actually more than 100 times smaller. And the distance between them is huge. The distance between Earth and the Sun is approximately 149 million kilometers. It's around 100 million miles. And that distance is actually changing a bit throughout the year. But that difference is only about 3% and produces no effect on the seasons. An interesting fact is that Earth is actually a bit farther from the Sun in July, during Northern Hemisphere summer. To understand all of that better, imagine a football field. With the Sun in the middle of it, one foot in diameter. The Earth in this picture would be 30 yards away and the size of a grain of sand. So, if not a change in distance, what could be a reason for the seasons? Well, many people miss an important fact – that the Earth's axis is tilted to its orbital plane. As a result, from time to time, northern or southern hemisphere gets more sunlight and becomes warmer. In this next picture, you can see that northern hemisphere gets more direct sunlight because it's tilted toward the sun. So, Northern Hemisphere, in this case, would have summer, and Southern Hemisphere would have colder weather because it gets less sunlight. So, people would call that period winter. In this lab, you are going to find answers for three big questions. First, why do seasons occur? And why does summer in the Northern Hemisphere occur then Earth is actually farthest from the Sun? And the third one is what is the actual uh, relationship between latitude, amount of solar radiation, and the surface temperature? And if you have any questions during your lab, do not hesitate to ask your lab instructor. Even though this is an online class, remember, we are here to help you. I wish you an exciting scientific journey. 
and see you next lab.